Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Thanks for watching. We are on campus uh, at the Microsoft campus, and uh, today we have the opportunity to meet some of our top IoT partners. Uh, Sensoria is one of them, and I have Davide from Sensoria. Thanks for joining the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So, can you real quick introduce yourself and what Sensoria is about? Sure. So, I'm co-founder and CEO of Sensoria, and uh, Sensoria is really a company focused on personal IoT. So if you think about IoT, there are only three kinds of IoT. Mm -hmm. There is industrial IoT, okay. there is environmental IoT, mm -hmm. your car, my okay. house, and then there is personal IoT, which is collecting data, biometric data from the human body. That's what we do. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Awesome, so can you tell us like a specific project, I think you, you brought some goodies as well, uh, that you guys are working on that illustrate the, the kind of, of uh, solutions that you offer? So that's interesting, because when I said personal IoT, you yeah. immediately went, I what, did, right? yes, right? I did. So we tend to uh, identify personal IoT with wearable technology right okay. now and wearables. Yeah. Yeah. But wearables are limited to the wrist, to yes. specific locations on the human body. Mm -hmm. But you woke up this morning, we probably did the same thing. We didn't know each other, right? We, yeah. we woke up, we took a Not shower, yet. <laughs> right? We, did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, did, we, we took a shower, but, and then we put our clothes on, right? Yes. The advantage of, of that type of workflow that all human beings go through mm -hmm. is wouldn't it be nice if we were able to actually collect data from all parts of the human body through mm -hmm. clothing and footwear? Okay, yeah. And that's really what's interesting. Rather than an accessory that Rather you add on top of it. Rather than just one piece of metal, met, metal, metal and plastic that is bound to the, to the wrist. Yeah. Right? Which, is, which is fine, but it's, it's limited yeah. by design. Right? And, and it's limited by design, and it's actually focusing on specific scenarios as Correct. well, right? Correct. So Correct. what do you have? You have something that actually addresses that kind of stuff. Yeah, scenarios. so we built a full architecture based on Azure. So mm -hmm. we have built textile sensors. Okay. We've built an IoT hub, which we call Sensoria Core, okay. for garments and footwear. Okay. And then we built an Azure architecture based cloud system mm -hmm. that collects the data and makes sense of the data for the user and the trusted advisor. Okay, I want to see it. Okay, let me I give you an example. Yes. <laughs> you want to see? <laughs> so this is it. actually an example that is definitely not a smartwatch. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Doesn't look like one. <laughs> it's not practical. <laughs> it's, it's a smart sock. <laughs> it is a smart sock. <laughs> so what makes it really cool is the fact that, as I was mentioning, there are non-traditional sensing technology okay. components embedded into it. Mm -hmm. So it, as an example, in this sock, we have yeah. three textile pressure sensors. Okay. They behave like FSR sensors, mm -hmm. but they're textile, they're soft, and they're washable. Okay, right? yeah, okay. Uh, as you can see, these three textile sensors are connected to what we call Sensoria Core, which okay. is our IoT hub for the human, okay. human body. Uh, this device comes with, uh, of course, a full IMU embedded, right? So okay. we have a three-axis accelerometer, we have a gyro, we have a magnetometer. Okay. But the cool thing is that in the back, we have the ability through an analog front end mm -hmm. to collect data from sensors that are external to the device. So you extend yeah. the collection of sensors up, yeah. that it can gather so data from. So we have the built-in ability to collect up to eight data, data sets, data, uh, analog data sets from as many sensors yeah. on top of the nine axis IMU. So you, yeah. you can imagine we can actually do some pretty cool things with that. And, and about connectivity, like this thing is connected? Yeah, this is Bluetooth Smart okay. to your watch or your okay, phone. Okay, got it. So that you have we, have built a, yeah. we have built a full SDK. We call it Sensoria Developer Kit because we have soft hardware yes. <laughs> and software <laughs> that's, included, included in that. But that's, yes, that's, that's pretty that's, cool. Um, that's correct. So you guys uh, are using Azure IoT technologies. Yep. So you're one of our top IoT partners out there. Why Azure? Why Azure IoT? Are there specific things that come to mind that made you pick us as your partner. Yeah, there are three three reasons why we, yeah. we picked Azure, and we actually decided to make our Azure architectural choice and decision in 2012. So okay. that was very okay. very early. Yeah, yeah. It was not an easy choice at okay. that point. No, it was I not. To, uh, yeah, clearly. But you know, number one, uh, development tools. You know, the, the the richness of the development tools, mm -hmm. and also the fact that we know, you know, the Microsoft development tools okay. very yeah, well yeah. Uh, helped a lot. Mm -hmm. Number two the openness of the platform to you know, open source uh, mm -hmm. components is very, very important to us. And last but not least is really Microsoft's understanding of the enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, what I mean with that is when you start collecting healthcare data, there are governmental rules mm -hmm. beyond even enterprise rules that define where that data needs to reside. So the ability to 
specifically mention where that data needs to be reside needs to reside mm -hmm. in a geofencing type of yeah. location, if yeah. you will, yeah. right? If it is German data, mm -hmm. it needs to stay within the EU. If it is yeah. U.S. data, it needs to stay within the U.S. And if it is Chinese data, so we cannot afford that data to go to a Russian server, yeah. right? So, yeah. so that that is crucial to us. Those okay. are the three reasons why we selected Azure. That that's great. So um, we appreciate that a lot because you're <laughs> making the pitch for us. I love that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> if you had so if you had to define this partnership between Sensoria and the Azure IoT team, what would be the few words you would use for for that uh, partnership? Uh, that's a great question. I, I think open mm -hmm. um, and uh, constructive. Okay. Uh, we tend to have a very direct uh, relationship uh, with you guys because because uh, we we were early adopters from the very beginning. Yes. So we have gone through uh, yeah. bump, a few bumps in a row, a both few. our bumps and your bumps. <laughs> and so we kind of have a much smoother uh, mm -hmm. runway right now. Uh, but you know, there's still a lot to do. I mean, again, if you if you go back to what I just said about yeah. IoT, mm -hmm. there is a lot going on in industrial. There is a lot going on in environmental, yeah. on human we're still at the very beginning of a new market. Yep. But I would argue that I care more about my personal data than my thermostat, right? So <laughs> I, I agree with you, and I look forward to uh, <laughs> test these socks and the shoes and so on that goes with it. Thank you. Well, awesome. I can give you some examples of how yeah. people use it right now, if you'd like. Yeah, 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 De definitely, go ahead. So we're working with the Michael J. Fox Foundation, as an example, okay. uh, and University of Sydney in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 100 patients using this sock right now mm. to monitor Parkinson's disease gait progress. Gait is the science of human locomotion. Yeah, yeah. It was defined by the Germans and the Italians in the mm. mid-1600s, but there's mm -hmm. still no real-time, real-life tool that can give a doctor guidance on how well that patient is walking today compared to yesterday, right? Yes. Is, is he taking his drugs in the morning? Is he not? Is mm -hmm. he, and if he's taking his drugs in the morning, are the efficacy of those drugs, is it there or yeah, not yeah. anymore because there is progression in the disease, right? Mm -hmm. So that's super, you know, it took, I, it's very encouraging. And uh, uh, I can tell you just to watching patients and researchers working with our that's technology is very rewarding. And, that, sure. and that's transforming because actually you're providing a technology which is like light, easy to use. Yep and yep. connect it. So yeah. basically, in a nutshell, they just have to put it on and they provide telemetry yeah. that will be super That's, useful. Yeah. That is exactly the key. I mean, if you want to summarize the key opportunity for us at Microsoft in this space, uh, from a business development perspective, mm -hmm. is exactly what you said, which is we are able to collect data, novel data sets. Mm -hmm. So from a development standpoint, we're going to get data that no one else has. This is not number of steps. It's cadence. It's stride length. Mm -hmm. It's stride speed. Yeah. It's it's movement in space of a specific limb compared to the ground, right? So this type of data you cannot get from a watch. Yeah, no, <laughs> true. Simply, simply. You can try and interpret, yeah, you but can, you don't get yeah, the Yeah, you can hire data. a couple of yeah. math maniacs and do crazy signal processing, yeah, yeah. but it's not going to be as good Yes. quality data as we get, right? So yeah, and you need that for this kind of medical oh. scenarios where the yeah. data has to be super precise to really be useful. Correct, correct. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Grazie Thank mille. <laughs> Grazie a te. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot for watching the IoT Show. Don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.